welcome back to Quick Clicks. This is episode three, and today is going to be a special birthday edition because today is Anthony Jackson's 66th birthday. Obviously, an incredible bass player, a pioneer of the six string bass, which is either one of the best or the worst things to happen to the instrument, depending on your viewpoint, but an absolute master of the bass guitar, completely uncompromising in his musical vision as well. He managed to thrive during the 70s and 80s. Uh, whilst refusing to slap at all um, and he hasn't stood up on a gig since the early 70s so quite a remarkable man in every sense of the word we're going to look at a couple of his licks on the Shaka Khan tune Move Me No Mountain so on the recording he's tuned his jazz bass down to a low C so I'm going to play this on a five string bass and then I'm going to look at it transposed into a different key where you can play it on a four string So to break that down, the first lick is nothing more than a C minor arpeggio, fairly common musical vocabulary, but Anthony presents it in a way that makes it exciting. We're starting with an approach note into the fifth, chromatic approach from below, and then we're sequencing the arpeggio through the various chord tones to land on the low C, the root. Requires a little bit of fretboard gymnastics to get down there. But it's an amazingly ear grabbing feel and all it contains is chord tones and one chromatic approach. Now this is the sort of thing that Pat Metheny, the guitar player, does all the time. He'll play some amazing lines that make you think, oh, what the hell was that? You transcribe them and he's not playing anything more than chord tones. It's not what he plays, it's how he plays it and how he phrases it. So this little sequencing trick makes something that is traditionally used as an exercise really, really musical. If I swap to a four string bass, we're gonna change the key and play it in G. We're approaching the fifth, which would be D. So again, this little pivoting thing needs some explaining. So C sharp into D, D flat into D, however you want to think of it. And then root to third, flat three. And first finger drops down and deals with that fourth, that awkward fourth, from D to G. And now little finger is going to pivot round, scrunch up to grab that low B flat before going up to the fifth and then back to the low root. So it's really worth transposing this lick to other chord types as well because when you're stealing from other people you don't want to just be a one trick pony and just only be able to play that lick in that key over that chord type you want to be able to make it your own, to use a horribly cliched phrase. So how about adapting this to fit with a dominant chord? For instance, so G7. And I had the flat seven in there as well, uh, which wasn't in the minor lick. Or even G half diminished. Trickier chord to play over. Traditionally, we lack vocabulary over half diminished chords, minor seven flat five chords, if you will. So here we've got flat five. This actually fits in one position now. So you could adapt it and play it over major chords, major sevens, major sixes, whatever, sus chords, perhaps. It's really worth sort of doing the homework, and that's where you find sort of your own voice on the instrument. You take something that you've stolen from someone else and you adapt it and hopefully you come up with some new musical vocabulary. So there we have it, a very quick lick from the great Anthony Jackson. So essential Anthony Jackson recordings. We'll start off with the pop stuff. 
he made three records with Shaka Khan during the 70s and possibly the 80s too. Um, the first one was Shaka, he's not on every track. Will Lee was on most of that, but Anthony does some amazing playing, particularly the track Love Has Fallen On Me. If you can see that, Love Has Fallen On Me has some disgusting bass playing and so you start to hear him using a detuned jazz bass. I think it goes all the way down to a low C and that sort of foreshadows his extended range experiments. Naughty is probably my favourite Anthony Jackson record ever, favourite Shaka Khan album. It also features Marcus Miller and Will Lee. No, Willie Weeks. Will Lee's on that one. Marcus Miller and Willie Weeks, who are both not too bad at playing the bass. Um, but this is where you get tracks like Clouds, Move Me No Mountain, um, and Our Love's In Danger, which start to showcase sort of the formation of Anthony's style as we know it today. You've got this amazing fusion of kind of Jameson-esque chromaticism with some just absolutely ferocious playing, so worth a listen. Um, there's also some great pick playing on that record too. Last of the Shaka Khan records with Anthony is What You're Gonna Do For Me, which is kind of in the same vein as Naughty. There's some absolutely disgusting synth playing um, by Greg Flynn Gaines on this record as well, which is definitely worth checking out. So those three. Shaka also on the pop side of things, Steely Dan's Goucher um, has some amazing work by Anthony on it. You can sort of hear the concentration, the laser beam like focus that he puts into every note very clearly on some of these tracks. Um, I think Glamour Profession is probably the standout for bass playing on that. Moving away from pop into the Latin side of things, Michelle Camillo, One More Once. This is a phenomenal big band album. Um, amazing playing from everyone. Great rhythm sections. You've got a couple of drummers on here, Cliff Armand and Mark Smitty Smith. Anyway, Cliff Armand absolutely tears it up. Anthony Jackson on absolutely terrifying form throughout this. Definitely worth a listen. Standout tracks, uh, Why Not and Not Yet. Both absolutely terrifying from, from a technical point of view and it really showcases Anthony's playing in a Latin environment. It's also worth checking out the live album that Michelle Camillo put out in a trio with Anthony Jackson and Dave Weckl, which is called Rendezvous. Again, just absolutely flawless playing all round. If you're really into those, great trio record, same lineup. Moving away from pop and Latin into the dark arts of jazz, Anthony's played a lot with uh, the pianist Michelle Petrucciani before he passed away and Steve Garrett. So this live album trio in Tokyo is great. Really incredible walking bass on an electric bass that swings really hard. Um, so trio in Tokyo is worth a look, as are the studio albums featuring Anthony and Michelle Petrucciani. Last but not least, Steve Kahn, Eyewitness series of albums. You can I got this on Amazon for not a great deal of money. Three records. It's not particularly accessible. It's a bit out there. Lots of tracks are sort of eight, nine, ten minutes long. But the playing is incredible. It's almost like a free jazz, largely improvised thing. Um, Anthony Jackson and Steve Jordan on the kit. Absolutely incredible. Some, again, mind-boggling playing, but requires a lot more patience um, and an ear for fusion compared to some of the other things. So my advice is start with the Shaka Khan, Steely Dan, and then work your way down the rabbit hole.